listen, this is all I'm going to say about all the breasts, exposed breasts and breast emphasizing garment design. <laughs> Hey, hey, party people, I'm going to be reviewing the fall 2022 Oak Couture collections, and I'm going to focus my critique on answering three questions for each collection. Otherwise, I could talk about these for half an hour per collection. All right. Those three questions are, is it beautiful? Is it couture? Is it the brand? All right. So let's start with Chanel. Okay, I'm looking at Chanel. The fabrics, textures, embellishments are just very, just fantastically luxurious as usual. But the whole look is boring. It's not particularly beautiful. It's beautiful in a very like run of the mill sort of way. Not special. Like plain beautiful, not special beautiful. Is it couture? Is, you know, when I think of couture, I'm thinking of the upper echelons of design and construction. So is it couture? Construction, yes. Huge props to the atelier as usual. Design, no. Shapes were all over the place. There was no distinct point of view. Some of the patterns look like old carpets. You know, I love designing for older women and I wish more designers would also, but this looks distinctly like capital O, capital L, old lady, you know, which is different from, you know, designing mature but still beautiful looks for older women. Is it Chanel? Is it the brand? You know, all the brand aesthetic markers are there. Boxy shapes, patch pockets with the pocket flap, with the buttons, tweed, trim, uh, the braid trim, camellias, black and white, gold chain, extravagant buttons. You know, I always laugh. When people regard Coco Chanel as some early bastion of minimalism, have you seen any photos of her? <laughs> this is all stuff she wore all at the same time. <laughs> uh, you know, some of the tweets were manipulated to stripey effects that looked more Missoni than Chanel. But anyway, tell me in the comments what you think of the hats. I vote look 34, most likely for Margot Robbie to wear on the red carpet and get all the bad reviews. I love her, but um, she needs to fire her stylist. Valentino, Pierpaolo Piccioli for Valentino. Number one, is it beautiful? Absolutely. Is it the brand? Feminine, extravagant, bold, but restrained from being too loud. I mean, except for the feather head pieces. Typical acidic colors, unconventional color combinations that have become part of Piccioli's signature, soft tailoring, big shapes. Piccioli never met a feather or a bow that he didn't like. Okay? Splashes of Valentino red, you know, throwing in a small percentage of men's looks that blend in seamlessly with the women's wear. A lot of the time when you see men's and women's looks in the same collection, they'll, the men's looks will be a little bit separate. Even if thematically the same, they'll have separate fabrics, separate colors, but not with Valentino collections. They just blend right in. Is it couture? Is it the upper echelons of design and construction? Construction, yes. Design, mm. you know, I think couture should always bring something new. That's why is it beautiful and is it couture are two separate questions, okay? Couture is like the concept cars of fashion. Where is the newness? Where is the big idea that you're bringing into the new collection? Like traditionally, couture used to be the people where, you know, the trends were first seen. And I don't know, where's the newness? Everything, everything was a beautiful rehash of everything we've already seen before from Piccioli, which is especially disappointing in a collection he dubbed The Beginning. You know, he's talking about coming full circle and this is the beginning of something new, blah, blah, blah. What new? There was no new. Was it beautiful? Yes. Was it new? No. This is Olivier Roustan for Jean-Paul Gaultier. And this is a little bit different because Jean-Paul Gaultier has guest designers do the couture collections, you know, one season at a time as opposed to other couturiers who are trying to build their design legacies and their points of view over the course of several collections, okay? Rustin is our generation's Karl Lagerfeld, 
in how he can dig into the archives of a designer and create a collection that simultaneously is new and fresh, but is also a gorgeous homage to the designer's previous works. So yes, one, it is beautiful. It's couture. It's the brand. In this love letter to Gautier, Rustan showed looks inspired by the hallmarks of Gautier's history. The tattoos, the looks inspired by his old perfume bottles from the 90s, especially those tin cans, the corsets, the repurposed denim, the sailor blue stripe looks, the fisherman sweaters, the Madame Grey inspiration. If you're someone who's followed Jean-Paul Gautier's career, you're basically shouting, I remember that collection. I remember that. I had that perfume, like consistently yelling that at the screen the whole time. <laughs> At the same time, Roussin's renditions are modern, clever, beautiful, artful blends of then and now. Just beautiful. Next up, we have Balenciaga by Dima Vasalia. And is it beautiful? Debatable. And I love that. Give me an Okator collection that is a little weird and a little controversial over a luxurious snooze fest any day of the week. You know, there are plenty of people who are just doing straightforward, beautiful, and that's great. But we absolutely need these designers who introduce something that's not just straight up beautiful, but a little bit weird as well. Does that mean I think everything uh, Vasalia does for his ready to wear Balenciaga? Does it mean I like all of that? No. <laughs> Let's just focus on this collection. Okay. This is a collection of ideas that aren't diluted into purable, purely wearable looks quite yet. Okay. So is it beautiful? Debatable. Is it couture? Also debatable, but I think it is. Okay. I can't remember if I mentioned it here or one of my reviews on Patreon, but there are a few designers determined to push denim into couture and luxury with debatable results. And, you know, with my lifelong love of denim, I'm watching. It's all very interesting. Scaparelli features denim on the couture. Uh, we're talking about that in a second. Okay, last question. Is it the brand? What was Balenciaga known for originally? Heavy use of black and monochromatic looks. Not really an attempt to be understated, but to make statement in sculptural silhouettes. These shapes didn't always follow the contours of the body. You know, Christian Dior, who was uh, Cristobal Balenciaga's contemporary, you know, Christian Dior really focused on extreme displays of stereotypical female form, but Balenciaga sculpted, creating both body conforming and conventional shapes. He once said, a woman has no need to be perfect or even beautiful to wear my dresses. The dress will do that for her. He loved a full back, billowing shapes, creating volume by either, you know, sturdy, full bodied fabrics and understructures or by using lots of gathers and shearing. And I think this collection looks very classic Balenciaga while still looking very 2022. Next up is Scaparelli. Is it beautiful? Eh. I'm torn. You know, all the accessories and pieces that were, you know, dresses and tops that look that were all made out of jewels and beading, like all of those were absolutely gorgeous. Look 20 and 21, be still my heart. But the clothes, eh. The flower pieces looked unfinished. It always looks like something's missing when you have these abrupt bursts of flowers with no transition, with no relationship with the rest of the garment. Okay? Look 22, especially with the random blobs of flowers, I don't get that at all. It looks like we're waiting for another layer of embellishment. Okay? Number two, is it couture? Yes and no. Elsa Scaparelli played with so many concepts other than human anatomy-centered surrealism. I'm really ready to see Daniel Roseberry play with something new. The designs are above and beyond what we would typically see in Ready to Wear, but I do want to see something else now. Okay. Three, is it the brand? See above. Where's my shocking pink? Where are my lobsters? Where's the trompe l'oeil, the funny buttons, the hidden jokes, the knits? Elsa started her career with a sweater. Like, where are the knits? And last up, I want to finish with Rahul Mishra. Many of you may not have heard of him, but he is the first guest of Okator from India. And he's committed to having his pieces made by artisanal communities all over India. This collection is inspired by the Tree of Life, and that is evident everywhere. Okay, so one, is it beautiful? Absolutely. 
intricate, gorgeously embellished, like walking, talking advertisements for the astonishing levels of skill artisans in India can offer. I'd say the weaker pieces are the works with random flower placement, like look 14 and 16. And I mentioned this before with the Scaparelli collection. Without anything connecting the flowers to the background, it looks random and unfinished, okay? Look 19 is better because the overall sparkle textures bring the look together. There's some relationship with the background and the flowers. There's a relationship there, the textures, okay? Number two, is it couture? Looks like it to me. I am itching to see some of these up close, and I really wish Vogue.com had posted some close-ups. And more so than some other collections, it's showcasing a fresh silhouette that plenty of designers will enjoy diluting to wearable pieces in future seasons. There's the leg of mutton sort of uh, sleeve look. There's like an overall exaggerated heart-shaped look. You know, we're going to be seeing that, I think. Number three, is it the brand? I don't know enough about him to say, but I'm looking forward to seeing more. <laughs>